welcome to this lecture in this lecture we are going to look at moment generating function an extension of moments which we learned in our previous lesson moment generating function is a special mathematical expectation of a random variable if you remember when we are looking at moments as the degree of moment increased the work became tedious and therefore, to simplify that work of looking for higher moments, then we need a function which can enable us to obtain the moments in an easier way. And one of those uh, functions is what to refer as the moment generating function. When this function exists for a particular distribution function, then it is unique and this property enables one to determine the probability distribution given the mgf so if that mgf exists then we are saying it is unique and therefore due to that uniqueness you can be able to state the distribution function whose mgf has been given so with that let's now define mgf First of all, we normally denote mgf with mx a function of t. So we begin by letting x to be a random variable. And therefore, the mgf is defined as the expectation of exponential of tx, where t is a small number in between negative h and positive h, and h is non-negative. So like expectation, the formula for mgf will depend on whether we are dealing with discrete random variable or continuous random variable. Let's begin by looking at a random variable x, which is discrete, and whose probability mass function is given by p of x uh, is equals to x. So by definition, we know that expectation of a discrete random variable is obtained by summing the, the variable times their corresponding probability. So here we are looking at the expectation of exponential of tx and therefore we'll be summing the product between exponential of tx and the corresponding probability of x which is probably that x is equals to x. When we are dealing with a continuous random variable whose pdf is f of x then instead of summation we are going to do integration. So we are going to integrate the product between exponential of tx and the corresponding pdf which is f of x and then we integrate this with respect to x from negative infinity to positive infinity the other part is just uh, doing the simplification and we'll be able to have the mgf whether your random variable is discrete or your random variable is continuous one thing i want you to note is that what we mean by existence of the function that is the mgf is that if we are dealing with a discrete random variable then if this summation here is finite then that mgf exists and if you are dealing with a continuous random variable then we mean that uh, that function will exist if the integral is finite with that we want now to move on and see how we can use the mgf to find the moments and we are going to begin by looking at a case whereby our random variable is discrete. So from our previous uh, talk, we have seen that the MGF of a discrete random variable is given by the sum of the product between exponential of Tx times probably that X is equals to X. But from calculus, you learn that exponential of Y is an infinite series which can be written as 1 plus y plus y squared divided by 2 factorial plus y cubed divided by 3 factorial plus 4 cubed sorry 
plus y raised to 4 over 4 factorial and we can continue like that so we put plus here and put three dots because we have said this is an infinite series so if we compare with our exponential of tx then it means that our y is equivalent to tx and therefore we can substitute exponential of tx with 1 plus tx plus the square of tx uh, divided by 2 factorial plus the cube of tx divided by 3 factorial plus we put some dots here to show that this is an infinite series so whatever is in this bracket we multiply by probability that x is equal to x and we check the summation so next we are going to expand this we multiply each term in this bracket by the probability and then we take the summation so we are going to have the first term to be uh, we take 1 times probability that x is equal to x and then we take the summation we are going to have the sum of probability that x is equal to x plus the second term will be the sum of tx times probability that x is equal to x plus the third term will be the sum of the square of tx divided by 2 factorial times probability that x is equal to x plus the cube of tx divided by 3 factorial times probability that x is equal to x then we put some dots here plus uh, in order to show that it's an infinite series from the properties of an uh, the pmf we saw that this summation here of the probabilities should be equal to one and therefore it means that this first term here will reduce to one so that's how we can rewrite that mgf the next step we are going to differentiate the mgf once with respect to t so if you look at the first term here we are talking about one one is a constant when you differentiate it with the t you are going to get zero as you can see here the next term here we have t x times probability that x is equals to x with regard to t then x times probability that x is equals to x will be a constant so what we'll be differentiating is just t and when you differentiate t with respect to t you'll get one and therefore this term will reduce to the sum of x times probability that x is equals to x because t here when you differentiate with t you'll get one and one times this term here will be or, or th that term the next term here we have the square of tx over 2 factorial times probability that x is equals to x so this one here can be written as t squared times x squared divided by 2 factorial and 2 factorial is same as 2 times probability that x is equals to x So, if you differentiate t squared with respect to t, then you are going to get 2t, because we reduce the power of t by 1, then divided by 2, and you know that we were multiplying with x squared, we were multiplying by x squared, then we multiply by the probability. So the 2 and the 2 will cancel out because when you divide by 2 by 2 is 1, 2 by 2 is 1. So we are going to remain with t times x squared times the probability. Then you take the summation. And therefore, the next term here will be just the sum of t x squared times probability that x is equals to x. So the next term here, we have the cube of tx over 3 factorial times probability that x is equals to x this this part here can be written as t cubed t cubed times x cubed and remember we are dividing by 3 factorial and 3 factorial is same as 3 times 2 times 1 which is 6 then times probability and remember we are summing this so we are going to differentiate t cubed with respect to t and when you differentiate it you are going to get 3 t squared so you get 3 t squared the other terms remain the way they were 
then remember we were dividing by 6. So this one, when you simplify, you divide by 3 here, you'll get 1. You divide by 3 here, you are going to get 2. So we are going to remain with the sum of t squared x cubed over 2 times probably that x is equals to x. If we can add another term here, the next term here will be the sum of uh, t, that is uh, the fourth power of tx, which can be written as t raised to 4, x raised to 4, divided by 4 factorial, and 4 factorial is same as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. Then you divide, uh, you multiply by probably that x is equals to x. So when you differentiate t raised to 4 uh, with respect to t, you are going to, to get 4 t cubed. 4 t cubed. Then you are multiplying by x raised to 4. x raised to 4. Then remember we are dividing by 24 and then we are multiplying by the probability and then we take the summation. So we are going to simplify. When you take uh, 4 divided by 4, you are going to get 1. When you divide 24 by 4, you are going to get 6. 6 is same as 3 times 2, which is 3 factorial. And, and therefore the next term here will be uh, t cubed times x raised to 4 over 6 times 4 that x is equals to x and we sum over all the x's and we can continue like that so we just put some dots here to show that it's an infinite series so if you simplify as we have already stated the first term will be 0 so this is what you are going to remain with so the next step is to now set t to be equal to 0 so where there is t, we are going to put 0. So if you look at the first term, which does not involve t, and therefore it will not be affected. The second term, we have a t here, so we substitute it with 0. And when you substitute it with 0, all uh, this term reduces to 0. And therefore, the summation also becomes 0. So this one here becomes 0. Then next term is this one here, where they still put 0. So you can see here we have t. When you put this one to be 0, all this term also reduces to 0. The next term also reduces to 0, and any other term which is coming after that will become 0. And therefore, we are only going to remain with one term, which is the sum of x times probably that x is equals to x. And from our previous work, we are able to see that this one here is just but expectation of x, and expectation of x is the first raw moment. So it means that the first row moments will be obtained by differentiating the MGF once with respect to t and then setting t to be equal to 0. Let's now differentiate the MGF the second time. So from the first uh, derivative of the MGF, we are going to differentiate it with respect to t. So if you look at this one, the first term does not involve t. So when you differentiate this one with respect to t, then that term will reduce to 0. To reduce to 0. So this one will not be there in the second derivative. Then the next term here, we have t. When you differentiate t with respect to t, you'll get 1. And therefore, we are going to have the sum of x squared, the sum of x squared, as probably that x is equals to x. Then the next term, we have t squared x cubed over 2 factorial. When you differentiate t squared with respect to t, you are going to get 2t. You get 2t because we are reducing the power of t by 1. And remember here we are dividing with 2 factorial. And 2 factorial is 2. So this 2 and this 2 will cancel out. And you are going to remain with the sum of t times x cubed times probably that x is equals to x as shown here. Then the next term we have t cubed. When you differentiate this one here, you are going to get 3t squared then times x raised to 4 divided by 3 factorial times probably that x is equals to x and then you take the sum so here remember we are dividing by 3 factorial and 3 factorial we have said this is same as 20
four. Sorry, three factorial is same as six because it's three times two times one. So here we are going to simplify, divide by three, one, divide by three, we have two. So here we are going to have t squared times x raised to four divided by two times probably that x is equal to x, which is this term here. And you can continue with the process. So here we put some dots to show that it's an infinite series. So this is the second derivative of the MGF. Next, we are going to set t to be equal to zero. Where there is t, we put zero. So if you look at the first term, which does not involve t, so it will not be affected by the value of t. If you look at the next term, where it involves t. So when you substitute uh, t with zero, all that term reduces to zero. The next term here, you can see we have t here. When you substitute it with zero, all this term also reduces to zero. And any other term after that will reduce to zero. And that it means that in the second derivative, of the MGF with respect to T, when you set T to be equal to zero, then we are going to remain with only one term. That is the sum of X squared times probably that X is equals to X. And from raw moment, you can see this clearly is the expectation of X squared, which is the second raw moment. And clearly you can see that to obtain the second raw moment, we are going to differentiate the, the, the MGF two times with respect to t and then set t to be equal to zero. We can generalize that one to the earth row moment, which means that to get the earth row moment, that is expectation of x raised to r, then you need to differentiate the MGF r times with respect to t and then set t to be equal to zero. In our next video, we shall be looking at a case of continuous random variable.